The central concern of this paper is sustainable e-learning, that is, e-learning that has become normative in meeting the needs of the present and future. Using organisational, technological and pedagogic perspective, the paper demonstrates that activity theory provides a common language for discussion across the three activity systems. The power dynamics that occur at the interface of the organisational, technological and pedagogic activity systems are considered. The role of professional development for teachers in establishing sustainable e-learning emerges as a central issue. Introduction. Nichols uses the term sustainable embedding to describe a process where e-learning is characterised as proactive, scalable and self-perpetuating. Jochens, Van Merienboer and Koper propose that the optimum integration of e-learning needs to address pedagogic, technological and organisational perspectives, a proposition that is not unproblematic where there is incongruence between these perspectives, a less than optimum outcome will occur. Activity theory. First generation activity theory represents activity at an individual level. It's based on the assumption that tools mediate between the subject and the object. These tools, such as physical tools, language and symbols, are created and or transformed in the course of the activity. Second generation activity theory represents activity at a collective level. Rules may be explicit or implicit. Division of labour refers to the explicit and implicit organisation of the community that is involved in the activity. Based on the elements of Generation 2 activity theory, Moanza and Engestrom list eight questions that need to be addressed when investigating a system and which provide an opportunity to identify tensions and contradictions within a single activity. Third generation activities theory represents networked activity and incorporates the idea of boundary objects, that is, objects that operate at the interface of many contexts. Where two or more activity systems come into contact, there may be contradictions and tensions. The activity theory approach provides the opportunity to make explicit and hence to better understand what happens when activity systems come into contact. There is potential for expansionist learning where the object or the motive of the activity are reconceptualized to embrace a radically wider horizon than in the previous mode of activity. Activity theory provides a common lexicon to describe the organizational, technological and pedagogic perspectives proposed by Jochens in terms of subjects, tools, object and outcome, rules, community and division of labor. If we assume that the object of each activity series system, that is organisational, technological and pedagogic, is to increase e-learning, the outcome of the object will vary between the systems. For the organisational activity system, the desired outcome is organisational sustainability. The technological activity system, the desired outcome will be technological sustainability. For the pedagogic activity system, the desired outcome will be rigorous and sustainable pedagogy. Organisational activity system. Within the organisational activity system, the desired outcome is to achieve organisational sustainability. Indicators may relate to financial sustainability, availability of facilities and resources, be they physical, virtual, intellectual or human. From a branding perspective, this might be measured by the level of customer recognition and acceptance. From a political perspective, improvements in relationships with those who control public funding. Most organisations are subject to political, legal and social obligations or rules that are represented in laws, policies and regulations. In a typical large educational organisation, the activity systems community includes board members and possibly shareholders, chief executive officer, senior management, middle and other managers, administrative support staff. In large organisation, there is typically a strong division of labour, both vertically and horizontally. The organisational activity system typically has at its disposal a range of political, physical, financial and human resources that can be allocated in ways that meet obligations and desires. Technological activity system Within the technological activity system, the desired outcome is to achieve technological sustainability. This might be defined as a system of financial, physical, virtual and intellectual resources 
that are capable of meeting present and future demands of technological needs. Tools available within the technological activity system relate to hardware and software, systems and procedures that ensure the security, reliability and scalability of the system. The technological activity system works within standards related to coding and interoperability, learning content and accessibility. The community includes programmers, developers, designers, hardware and software specialists. The division of labour, both vertically and horizontally, within this community varies depending on the nature and size of the organisation. Pedagogic activity system. Tools at the disposal of the pedagogic activity system include curriculum, learning and teaching resources, political influence, human and intellectual resources. These are influenced by official and tacit rules. Official rules include the need to achieve curriculum outcomes within the available resources. Tacit rules relate to normative behaviours and beliefs of teachers, vocational disciplines and learners. Teachers' disposition towards the use of technology and learning is fundamental to decisions about adoption. Despite the limitations of variations in terminology, there is a strong body of literature to support the contention that teachers' deep-seated notions of what constitutes good teaching are critical in shaping teachers' practice. The community involved in this activity system includes teachers, learners and support staff such as librarians and counsellors. Whilst the division of labour varies depending on the pedagogic model adopted, it is not unusual for there to be insulation between the roles of the responsibilities of the major groups. Power relations between activity systems. It would be naive to ignore the role of power relations that are active at the interface of contact between activity systems. The influence that each perspective brings to this engagement is not always equal. In general, the organisational activity system has power over the distribution of resources throughout the organisation and is able to set performance outcomes for various sections. Whilst it is common for people with teaching experience to be represented within this activity system, and it would be unrealistic to suggest that these people do not hope to achieve what they perceive to be high quality educational ed outcomes, their primary concern as determined by the nature of their position is organisational welfare. Through control over physical, financial and other resources, the organisational activity system adopts a powerful position in determining the fate of e-learning within an organisation. In many, if not most cases, sections responsible for information technology report directly to management. Given the central importance of technology to support business processes as well as teaching and learning, the technological activity system might be seen as a functionary of the organisational activity system, being privileged in respect to influencing the distribution of resources. The pedagogic activity system is dominated by those directly involved in teaching and learning. Through departmental managers, actors in the pedagogic activity system have links to the organisational and technological activity system. Change management and sustainable e-learning. There is a large body of literature on the generic topic of change management. Much of this takes an instrumental perspective providing how-to advice. Whilst the role of people in the change process is acknowledged, the premise of such models is that if the steps are carried out correctly, then change will be successful, a premise that smacks of technological determinism, that fails to acknowledge the complexity and impact of human behavioural dynamics that can be captured through a socio-cultural consideration. In the case of educational organisations, gatekeepers for change are frequently the teachers, and many educational change projects have floundered at the level of the teacher-learner interaction due to a lack of consideration for teachers fundamental beliefs and values about teaching and learning. If teachers' practice is to change in a fundamental way, then there is a need for professional development to move beyond simply providing technical level skills to address teachers' beliefs about what constitutes good teaching practice. Such an approach to professional development requires practitioners to engage in dialogue about personal practical theories of learning and teaching in order to subject their theories to review and revision.